Good evening and welcome to the Health and Wellness Show here on coaradio.com. And welcome. It's that time of the month, boys. We are here again with a fabulous guest in studio as well. And we have so many special announcements. We have new sponsors I'm so excited to tell you about. And right now in the studio with me is my musical director, Rich Shalanda. <laughs> Hooray! Hey, how are you, Marianne? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Are you on your sugar high now? I am. Because if anybody watched the Facebook Live, they'd know he was eating M&Ms and flying Oh, yeah, high. I found him here. The art arranged uh, <laughs> the studio here, so... Uh, He's I was looking for the drawer that the uh, candy's in, and I couldn't find the... He thought I got rid of the chocolate. I know. Please. And for those of you who don't know that voice, because he never wants to be on camera, ladies and gentlemen, he is our engineer, Art Ackerman. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hello. Hello. He's always the voice, but you never see you. It's amazing. It's Mr. Wilson. Yes, it is. But I got photos, girlfriend. <laughs> I know. So, you know what, Rich? Yes. Art? Yes. I am so excited to say right on this show, and we'll find out more about the details. But Richie, yes. we've been saying to folks for a couple of months now that you are back with the legendary rock band Nectar. Yes. Right? Yes. And we had a secret location that we had to be at, and our very own Art Ackerman was invited and attended that rehearsal. How about that? Now I can tell you where it is, but I'd have to kill you. <laughs> exactly. But for the new record, so you were privy to some clips of those songs, which was great. It's right? awesome. There's, uh, it's going to be awesome. Awesome, right? Yeah. And you know what happened out of that? I am so proud to say that Nectar has agreed, as well as City of Angels, I'm so excited, to collaborate with each other. Hooray! So this could mean That's good cool. things in the future with the rock cool. bands. And well, how could we not do that with uh, City of Angels? <laughs> you know, what a great cause, man. It's a great cause. And when we told Nectar about it, they were on board. And then you came in, and you were just art, which is amazing. And uh, Everybody voted on the hat today, and that was not the one that I liked. <laughs> oh, you like the other oh, hat? Oh, you saw that online. <laughs> yeah, I like the other hat. The other hat looked a, a better quality to me. With the stitches in it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh. And you know what? They were getting prepared not only for the record, which is we're going to be in studio July 6th, right? Yep. That's where we start. Yes. All sequestered in another secret location till it's announced. <laughs> yeah, but it's kind of cool. It's going to be kind of fun. It is going to be kind of fun. And uh, looking forward to that. Yep. And in the studio, we're going to have our bassist and helping Nectar and one of the original members, Derek Mo Moore. He'll be there, right? Yes. And another original member is the drummer, and that is our very own Ron Howden. Yes. Right? Yes. And then the incredible light show, but also lyricist and all kinds of things. And I just love seeing him every week. Yep. And that is Mick Brockett, yep. the original Yay. members. And Richie was part of Nectar back in the late 70s. Yes, I was. And so now you are um, the guitar, yep. you singer, songwriter. We all yes. help, which is amazing. And then also we have cool. another bass player, which is crazy because there's two bass players in the band, so it makes it so unique. Yep. Um, and was with Nectar formerly as well, Randy Dembo, so yes. he's part of it, mm -hmm. and a really cool dude too, I like him. And he's playing 12 string as well. Right, and the newcomer and world class keyboardist that yes. was from Flying Dreams and Project Object, Kendall Scott yep. has recently joined Nectar, yep. so it's a really collaborative bunch, and it's just a wonderful time, so I'm so excited for everybody and City of Angels, so thank you so yeah. much. It's going to be exciting times. It's going to be exciting times. So, you know, if you follow us on Facebook and things like that, you'll start seeing announcements coming out. And as Art was saying today, you could vote for the hat for some of the merch and all for Nectar. Know. It looked like Mo made his decision. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, Solid black. No. Maybe we'll get you at the other hat. Yeah, we'll maybe have to we'll figure a, something out for you. If there's a prototype, I'll get. maybe I could get it to you. Okay. Well, I then. like the age. <laughs> well, it's like a... It's like a, like a Distressed, sort of. That's like it. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> distressed. Distressed. There of you go. Distressed. Well, to talk about distressed, we have a new sponsor for the Health and Wellness Show that I am so excited to be a part of, as well as Rich Landa and now City of Angels, because they're our newest sponsor here. And this is something that I think all indie artists should pay attention to. Now, if you are an indie artist, and you don't know how to get paid for your music, 
IndieCast TV was just launched last week. And this is an avenue, just like music television should be, where everybody can come to your site. So Richie and I have been working on this project as well, along um, with some other people. And the problem that independent artists face today is that music television is barely playing music anymore. And if you were to put something on YouTube, you have like a one in 20 million shot for somebody to see it, and you're not really getting paid. Well here, IndieCast has made a platform, one of the only platforms out there that they're not making money off of your music that you're not getting paid for, you can get paid. So how do you do that? They have a solution in two ways. You submit a video and not every video makes the platform. It is absolutely segregated, it's reviewed, and it has high standards to get on there. If your video should get on there and goes into the music library and it becomes one of the top 150 plays, it goes into TV linear channel, a 24 linear channel for IndieCast. And when everybody clicks on your video, you as the artist will receive 25 cents a play, which is huge because when you have other platforms that are lucky if they're giving you 0 .002 cents, IndieCast wants to make sure that you are recognized. And every month you have a chance of getting in that linear channel because the voting starts over every single month to get you a chance and exposure broken down by genre. So please, please visit IndieCastTV.com now if you are an indie artist. Submit your videos because this is the way that you get paid. And we also will be having different sponsors and those sponsors are what help get you paid. And IndieCast wants to give back to the artists while they're helping you get your music out there. It's kind of a team effort and that's what I like. Help us help you. That's what this is about. So IndieCast is now part of the Health and Wellness Show and you will hear us talk about it quite often. And again, if you're watching the show, make sure you visit IndieCastTV.com. And if you're not an indie artist, you could visit and vote for your favorite videos by clicking on them, reading bios, doing everything that you possibly could do to help an artist build a fan base. It's wonderful. And it's the only platform out there now. And like I said, was just recently launched. So get in on the ground floor today. Thank you so much, IndieCast, for being a sponsor here on the Health and Wellness Show. Yeah, that's nice. So cool. it's, that's a super channel, man. IndieCast exactly. is a real super channel. It really is. And they'll have different genre shows on there that yep. you can meet artists and guests and get to know them. And yep. um, I'm so proud to say that, you know, we might see Nectar on there some way, somehow, because they are the legendary rock band and things like that. So, again, IndieCast, thank you so much. We couldn't do it without you. And before yep. I announce my special guest, because she's into music, she's into everything, you'll find this out, our other sponsor is high-tech glow buds earphones and i want you to know about these i'll tell you more about them later but if you call our show and want to speak live to our special guest jerry you can call in at 609-241-7103 and you could score a brand new set of headphones from high-tech glow buds so without further ado because i'm those, so excited those headphones hold those things up again let me just see they're those cool. they're awesome and they're pretty they're really they, pretty. They actually light up, so if you're running or whatever, they glow in the dark, and they also pulse to the music. They do. Oh, yeah, like when I run. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and we'll get more into that. But, yes, those are on the table or walk, for a know. caller. So, anyway, I don't want to waste any more time. But that was so cool. I loved everything you said. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank it's all you. awesome. Thank you. Our special guest tonight is an author, a nutritional health coach, a recovery coach, a vegan chef, and has her own radio talk shows. She is here tonight to explain what happened to her, what changes she made to regain her life, and how she is achieving all her dreams. She is a force to be reckoned with. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the studio, Jerry Petito. Oh. Thank you, thank you. Woo. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the show. I'm honored, wow. I'm so happy to have you here, and you were nice enough to have me on your show. Like I said, it was probably about a little over a yeah. year ago, and I had so much fun, and everything always gets in the way, so I'm glad that we're here. Finally. That you're here, and we're Finally. good. So I want everybody to know about you. Okay, so I'm going to start off just an easy one. Where were you born and raised? 
I find this fascinating. I was born in Long Island City, New York, and that's where I was raised. And I moved to New Jersey at 12 years old, Robbinsville. So, do you, so here's the question. Do you like New York or do you like New Jersey better? Okay, so that, that's, not, that's a trick question, okay? <laughs> so listen, I love them both. Okay. Um, I'm a New Yorker. Uh -huh. I mean, my heart is there, you know? And uh, I love New Jersey, but I love New York. Uh, you know, that's where my heart is. That is. So you like all those songs by Sinatra? Forget it. New York, New York and all of that? Of course. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> now, just so people get to understand you, I know that you're a mother, but is it true, the rumor has it, you might, you don't look it, but could be a grandmother? My grandson is graduating high school at in a couple Are you hours. kidding? Tomorrow. Wow. <laughs> Wait, t what is this Wednesday? What is yes. this Wednesday? Friday. My grandson's graduating high school. And I also have a little granddaughter. My daughter had them deliberately all these years <laughs> apart, which just cracks me up. I love her to death. She's only three. <laughs> okay, but my grandson's 18. Are you kidding? No. You're like a grand diva. Thank you. <laughs> You're Thank not you a grandma. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. But you also had a lot of ups and downs that I think our listeners can really relate to okay and we're all here for city of angels which we know is about addiction That's recovery right. so i'm going to get to your book and things like that but sure. i want the audience to get to know a little bit about you so and get a clear picture of you okay. jerry petito so can you tell me your life experience what led you to be an addict at the time okay absolutely um all right, I'm going to share something. I'm an open book, guys, right? So I'm going to share something, and I'm going to share how good God is and what he's done 28 years later to make me finally really heal from what made me become an addict. This is a crazy story. So I was only 13 years old or so, 13 or 14, um, and a neighbor touched me, okay? Mm -hmm. I was a tough kid, though. I'm going to say this, and then you'll understand why. I did not look like a kid. I had a C-cup chest. I was a New York, you know, smart-ass New York kid. Right. Um, tough kid, right? Mature. But I was still a kid. My neighbor was only in his late 20s. He was moving away in a couple of weeks anyway to another state. And he touched me, and I remember saying, you have 30 seconds to get your hands off of me, or my father will be in jail for murder. Hmm. And he went... You know, yeah. walked out of, you know, walked away, whatever. I knew I couldn't tell my father because, but guys, listen, and I'm going to say this, things were very different back then. Today, you call the cops immediately, you tell your parents, that's it. But back then, things were very different. He had a little baby, they were moving anyway. Um, I, talk, I knew I had to tell someone, I knew I could not tell my father, he would have absolutely killed him with his bare hands. So I told my uncle, and my uncle let him know he knew, and the reason I started doing drugs was not because he touched me, but because I thought I let a child molester go. Oh, wow. Okay, and that is the truth. Because I could have handled that. Believe me, I was a tough kid. That wasn't the issue. The issue was, did I do the right thing? Did I let a child molester go? Hmm. I'm going to tell you how God is so good, okay, and faithful. Uh, two years ago, my father passed away, and we had a family party and he was invited with his family from another state and I didn't know they were going to be there I haven't really even known anything about him but his family's still close to some family members of mine he's in his late 70s now well at the end of the party he was watching me and he approached me and he came up at me with his lips perched and I did this and he got my cheek and then he slapped my butt but here's why I was so happy that happened. Because I said to him, you're still a pervert. And he went, so what? This dirty old man. Oh, and he wow. slapped my butt again. The reason why I didn't punch him, and I said, thank you to God for this. I said to him, you better count your blessings that I'm a Christian because I'm going to walk away from this. I said, thank you, Lord, because God let me know I did not let a child molester go. Because if he was a child molester, he would not have been interested in me at 58 years old. Right. Mm. Right? So that was freedom for me. Mm. 28 years wow. later wow. from when I, I got to clean and sober. But that was the real freedom for me. Wow. That's amazing. It's amazing. 
It's like amazing how it came full came circle. Amazing. But so many years later. Okay. So there was like a lesson in it. Yeah. So now that you felt, which is d very different because people would be a victim to this whole thing. No. Yours was, I was afraid I let somebody go. Yeah. So how did you get into the drugs? Like, well, how did that happen? Like, well, what, did somebody approach my you? cousins? I had older cousins from New York. They used to come and spend weekends with us. And uh, of course, pot some pills here or mm -hmm. there but it started with pot when i was 14 you know older cousins stupid older right. cousins but i don't regret it because if i didn't go through everything i went through marianne i couldn't be here helping people today right so but that's how it started with older cousins and that's usually how it happens yes and peer church, so just try it that's you right know. i remember a cousin saying to me you know you're one of the cool cousins but you're still um, inside the box. If you do this with us, you'll now be outside of the box. Wow. Oh, wow. I remember that. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. Yep. So how long were you doing the drugs for? So how long did that continue? I did drugs till I was 30 years old, but I, I, okay, so I was what you would have called back in the beginning a functioning drug addict. My family didn't even know. I, what does that mean? Okay, for that means that know. I owned a business. Okay. Um, I owned a home. My, I, to this day, I'm very clean, neat, organized, like ridiculous. I was in counseling for that. So my house was beautifully kept. I had a beauty salon. My salon was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I made so much money back in the 80s and 90s because we were able to do that. And right. it wasn't healthy for me. So I was a functioning drug addict to the point where close people didn't even know what was happening on the weekends. My mom would keep my daughter for me on the weekends because I owned a salon, I was working so many hours, and she didn't want me to ever feel like I missed out. Right. Um, so that's when I did the deed. Mm -hmm. But as I got really into it, and then I started doing heroin and everything else, then it would be Friday to Monday, my mom would keep my daughter for me. Mm. Oh. And an Italian mom, a grandmother, they didn't care. She wanted her every day. Right. So she didn't even think, you know. So that's what happened there. And so I was in control, which is ridiculous to even say, because mm -hmm. you're really not. But I was in control until I was out of control. Right. Mm -hmm. And then what prompted you? Like, what was your calling to say, I have to change? Or what led you to recovery? Okay. Wait till you hear this one. I want to hear it. So a lot of my clients, most of my clients, were very wealthy women, lived in Princeton and stuff back in the 80s and 90s in the salon. One of my clients, I'm not going to mention her name, but she was the judge. She was a municipal court judge in Mercer County, so she was like the boss of all the judges. She's still in my life today. We, we were very close, and uh, I used to go to the courthouse and meet her for lunch a lot as well. I owned a black and gold 1990 Eldorado Cadillac with Elvis license plates. Talk about flashy, <laughs> right? Talk about flashy. It saved my life. Really? Yes. So one night I was with my friend. She was driving my car and we were going to go to cop our heroin in Trenton. And the young man that was our dealer didn't have any dope. So we had to go two blocks. He gets, imagine this, he gets in the back of my car tells us where to go. We drive two blocks away. An unmarked police car recognized uh -huh. my plates, Elvis, and my car from the courthouse mm. and followed us. He saved my life. He, pull, he waits till the young man goes in, gets the drugs, gets back in my car. So he's got eight bags of heroin in my car. He pulls us over. He calls the judge in the middle of the night. It was like 1.30 in the morning. And he comes to my car and he says, Jerry, Judge so-and-so says, get this guy out of your car now and go get some help and go get some sleep. I can't tell you what that did for me. Wow. Wow. Now, I'm going to tell you why I disagree with some of the stuff that's in the 12 steps because it's, it's important with this story. They teach us to be selfish in our recovery. That doesn't work because we were selfish through our addiction. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. All I thought was... Oh my goodness, my family. So if I stayed selfish at that moment, I wouldn't have survived. 
I could not believe what was next if I didn't get clean and sober. And that was it. That was the night that changed my life. The fact that that officer was there and let you go because it was in your car, the whole thing, whether everything, it was that gentleman, everything. he really saved your life saved in my more life. ways than one. Saved my life. He really did. And, and, and it was all because of the flashy car with the Elvis plates that he recognized. Think about that. And here I am in, in the middle of Trenton. Well, let me ask you this. That's some, why it stood out. <laughs> that's right. But that's right. some listeners might not know. He told you to go get help. Yes. And you did. Yes. How did you go about finding that help? Okay. If you can go about finding your drugs, you can go about finding help. Absolutely. Okay. So I made a decision, and I said, that's it. And I had to come clean to my family. And that's the only part where I get emotional because that that hurt them so much. They didn't know. They didn't know the extent of it. And um, I had to come clean to my family. And I said, that's it. And uh, found out about Princeton House. Mm -hmm. And sorry, guys. And that's no, what I did. Please. Yep, I put myself in Princeton House. Um, yep. And it shows that it worked <clears throat> for you. made a decision, a clear-cut decision. That's right. So this comes to a very controversial question yep. I'm going Here to ask. I, I you it. know it. And it's because the subject matter we're talking about in New Jersey yesterday, for those of you who didn't know, it was a free giveaway of Narcan yep. um, in the selective drugstores and all this. There we go. And it, there was so much controversy about this, yep. whether or not it should be given away free because of all the EpiPens yep. that, you know, somebody doesn't. No, you know, they're not okay. born into a food allergy, or they are. And this is, comes to a question that I'm going to ask you, yep. because you are in recovery, is that, is it a choice, or is it a disease? Okay. Addiction. So now, guys, listen to me. I'm going to tell you facts. Nothing I'm telling you is an opinion. I've even studied the brain. I've been all over the world. I have, I even went to Russia when it was communist, through, for health tours through Lenox Hill Hospital back in the 80s, okay? Behind the scenes everywhere. I'm gonna tell you why it's not a disease, and I'm gonna tell you why it is a choice, but I'm gonna explain the word disease to you. The word dis-ease is really what it is, and there's a difference. Yes, while the addict is using, and guys, it doesn't have to be drugs or alcohol. It could be food, it could be sex, it could be porn, it could be anything, right? While you are using anything that makes your, your patterns change, that makes your, you know, it takes over your life in some way in a negative way. So it could be anything. It could be gambling, right? What happens is this. Your brain cells become altered. So that's where the word disease comes in, okay? But the reason why I prefer calling it a dis-ease of the brain cells is because that's really what it is while you're using whatever it is you're using. Because in one year, one year, you can be completely healed, okay? The reason why I don't teach that or want to tell addicts that I try to help that you have a disease or you're powerless over it is because that's what they become. They become powerless over it, okay? You have to empower the addict. I was empowered. I'm going to tell you what happened to me. Things, my entire life, things always had to make sense. Right. So, I, you know, I don't know where that's come from, but even like when, things always had to make sense to me. I used to question God as a kid and say, but God, how come this, 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 and this? And he'll answer me, believe it or not. We're allowed to question God. He's my heavenly father. So, um... What did not make sense to me was this. I went to Princeton House, which was wonderful. 30 days later, I did everything they told me to do. They said, get a sponsor and go to meetings every day. So I did. This is what did not make sense to me. Here I am, and, and for me, okay, everybody's different, guys, so right. I'm not telling anyone not to go to meetings. Why it did not work for me. Here I was walking into these rooms getting up there every day for a month saying, hi, I'm Jerry, I'm an addict, I'm powerless. Well, that made me powerless and that made me want to use. I wanted to shoot myself. Mm -hmm. I said, I cannot be part of this. What did not make sense to me was this. On one hand, they're teaching you 
that your loved one has a disease and they're powerless over their addiction. But on the other hand, they're telling you that that loved one, it could be your child, right? Someone you really care about, who has a disease, who's powerless over it, you have to make them hit rock bottom, don't help them. Sometimes if you have to kick them out, you have to kick them out. Sometimes you have to take their car, take their car, don't give them money. That's a contradiction. Because if someone I love truly has a disease and is powerless over it, there is no way in hell I'm kicking them to the curb until they hit rock bottom. That's mm -hmm. not happening. So that's why I say there is a dis-ease of the brain going on, but it can be healed. I've actually kidnapped family members and friends. I, I locked one in the basement for 30 days. Absolutely. Oh, wow. And they thanked me to this day. That was over... Whew, it's got to be a 25 years ago. Wow. Yes. So the Narcan. All right. I have Narcan, okay, because I'm, I'm a, you know, recovery coach, so mm -hmm. I have it. My daughter, when they passed it, she called me up and she said, Mom, what are we supposed to think about this? And I said, I'm not okay with that, to a point, and I'll explain. Should addicts be able to just walk into CVS and get it free? Well, the EpiPen for kids? No, absolutely not. I don't agree with that. But what I do agree with is maybe uh, addiction coaches, maybe some family members who want to just have it there without the addict even knowing they have it mm -hmm. could have access to it. Because to me, R Richie and I, thanks to City of Angels and our as well, we're all recovery yes. coaches. And so yes. what you see, to me, having Narcan in the house is like having that EpiPen in a whole nother matter of fact. Where I was having a problem yesterday was where some of it was given out for free, where I see people with Happy Pens, they're charging almost That's $700 my point. for That's an how I feel as well. Well, it's okay that it's for sale. It's okay somebody, because I don't even think you need a prescription. You can walk into a pharmacy and you can purchase that Narcan. I'm not okay with it. Right. But it also, you know, I understand the state wants to bring awareness to it. But I also think what the state really needs to look at is how to get people in recovery. We know insurance companies give you the 30 days. 30 days is not no. enough for somebody. You have to get to somebody, not only physical you know, withdrawal, right. but you have to get into that person. You have to find out what made them you know, That's right. rely on this, what's going on. You know, teaching them to believe in themselves, empower them, like you're saying, yes, absolutely. Empower them. You have to empower them. And to be able to, you know, live life. Now, are there slip-ups somewhere along the way? I'm sure there is. I have never, and I admit, never been an addict, but I've been around people who have been. It is very difficult. It's difficult for the families because they're going through it. It's horrible. Besides the person, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said sometimes the addict is selfish, you know, and that's true to a point. Um, I do understand the concept where it starts as a choice and people say it could turn into a disease. I, I see both sides of it, yep. both medically and yep. a choice factor. And I think the state has to do more. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's not giving out Narcan for one day for free. No. Nope. It's not. It is getting people into recovery, getting them into the right programs. And where I'm getting a little bothered, and maybe I'm wrong, and if somebody wants to call in at 609-241-7103 and correct me, I'd be more than happy to do it because this is just my opinion. I'm not sure if I'm understanding this correctly. But, you know, when you have all of these things for 30 days, these recovery centers. You know, they come out and then they say, okay, you have to get a job, you have to do this, you have to do that. Well, now you have something on your record that you were involved with drugs and you're going into an employer who's gonna hear this. How many people are gonna wanna employ somebody like that? Because there's a stigma on this. Okay, so wait, I wanna answer that. Yeah, please. So, and I, I wanna give a shout out based on what she just said to Friendlies in Robbinsville. I'm gonna go into that. Because they will hire them. Okay, that's perfect. They and will, I, they're in yes, here. They will We're going to go them. into all that because you know? it's one of these things that, you know, they have to have something. And what happens? The spiral downward. I'm worthless. I'm yep. nothing. This happens. And then what happens? You go in for another 30 days. So if there, is there a time frame? Maybe you, are, you can answer this, that there's a time frame. Okay, somebody goes into recovery. They're there for 30 days. They get out. They have a relapse of some sort. Are they allowed, does insurance go back in after so much time and pay for another Here's thing? the problem. You get 30 days. Most people used for years or decades. Yeah. 30 days is not going to kill Correct. your addiction. 
And then the problem is aftercare. What happens? You know, you get that 30 days. They're not prepared to get out and have a job, but yet they have to go find sober living, you know. And that's why I put my kids back in my house. You know there what you I go. mean? And it's a, just a decision you have to make. I don't believe in the kicking them to the curb. There you go. You know what I mean at all. Right. Uh, I tell parents, you know, if you have to put them out on the street, sometimes you just have to do that. Um, and then what we do is, uh, you know, they're hungry, buy them a pizza, have it delivered to the That's corner. That's right. You know, whatever it takes. Absolutely. Amen to that. Hmm. Well, That's beautiful, Art. Buy yeah. them a room. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, what, Just right? don't give them the cash. You know? That's right. So, and don't kick them to the curb if you don't have to. Exactly. Uh, um, that, uh, it's almost like when they need you most, you, you, you're going to deny them. And most as a parent, okay, and I had I two that. children, you know, two of my daughters, and I lost my nephew, um, you know, to this it's hard to say you're not going to do anything for them exactly you know I, I, and and your natural instinct as a parent is That's to right. do something do something um but you know as a parent you have to educate yourself as well you know what i mean about what you're dealing with and the disease of addiction and, and, and you have to learn um there's multiple pathways to recovery so you really yep. have to just go with you know what works for you exactly we're going to take a break from this because i do want to talk about one of our sponsors of the show as i originally told you high tech glow buds they are for safety and sound high performance audio for outdoor joggers bicycling and all sports high tech brand of earphones are designed and manufactured with electroluminescent technology glow bud earphones emit a safe and bright neon light with the touch of a button will flicker neon lighting along to your favorite tunes. So in addition for an enhanced audio experience, they added in high performance studio drivers designed to their specification for churning out amazingly clear and vibrant highs and bottom to create one of the best sports earphones for indoor and outdoor use day or night on the market today. Now, you can feel safe at night with enhanced visibility for walking and talking, jogging and being seen by street traffic, wearing their sports talk glow buds. Hear and see the difference. You can get your pair today through their distributors at www. What's on sale? That's w a t t s o n s a l e dot com. What's on sale dot com. And thank you so much, High Tech and Globuds, for being a sponsor here on the Health and Wellness Show, only on coa radio dot com. So I love those. Earphones. That's so cool. I just love them. <laughs> Absolutely love them. And. Anybody who is just joining us, you are listening to the Health and Wellness Show here on coaradio.com. And our very special in-studio guest tonight is the lovely and talented Jerry Petito. And we're finding out a little bit of private things about you. And I love the fact that you're sharing and having some really great discussion. So keep listening in because at 9 p.m. we are going to have a very special announcement right around there. And I'm so excited to get that out. And if you want to be part of the show and score your high-tech earbuds, all for yourself, you can do so by dialing 609-241-7103. So thank you. And well, I'm going to come back to you because you're incredible, and I know you've had challenges. So you had some serious health challenges that none of us should have to go through. And I believe it was cancer, right? Yes. What type of cancer? I had two, I had colon cancer and then breast Okay, and how was it diagnosed? Were you symptomatic? What happened? Okay, so, well, the colon cancer, I was about 100 pounds. I was real thin and sick at the time, and I didn't go to the bathroom sometimes months at a time. That oh, wow. Was, that was years of that. So um, it was a matter of time. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened there. Okay, and then you go to the doctor, and he gives you this diagnosis. And I shook his hand, and I said, thank you, but no thank you. Mm -hmm. I knew... I would die. Um, so I did some research. And, and, I, and I'm going to tell you why I knew I would die, guys. So listen, um, my mom's family, everyone in my mom's family died before they were probably even 70, colon and breast cancer. So I knew it was a matter of time. I had, you know, you, we eat the same things, you know, the whole bit. My body couldn't process meat or dairy, and that's what I lived on, especially cheese. But anyway, I said I can't go that route. So I found a man named George Malcolmus. It did a lot of research. Mm -hmm. This man had colon cancer, and it went into his bones, and they sent him home to die, and he's still alive. You could check him out, uh, George Malcolmus. 
and I went and studied under him how to fast. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did. He saved his own life through fasting. I started fasting and uh, believe it or not, just water for two months. Mm -hmm. I got a home colonic system, um, locked myself in my home. My daughter and my grandson actually lived with me at the time. He was little. And uh, just did everything I had to do uh, for that and saved my life. And now I help people. Which is good because even if you get a diagnosis like that, this is just me, it is a medical opinion. What you do with that and how you can make the lifestyle changes that you need to make. That's it's, right. It's like a symptom. That's right. You know, it's not always your destiny. It's a symptom that something is going awry in the body. You have to kind of look within, see what your options are. And it's scary. I mean, when you get that news. Mm, I wasn't scared. No? Because I already knew. Okay. I mean, you just it went know. on for years. I knew. Oh, so you knew something was going on. I, I knew a lot was going on. No. Right. Yeah. So, but you've overcome that. Yeah. And then it's going to bring me to my next point because you are an author of the book titled, I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass, <laughs> which I have to tell you, I absolutely love the title because it kind of just hits you right in the face. Okay. So what made you come up with this title? I love it. It's okay. great. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that your face is on, on the jacket yeah. on the book. <laughs> so, um, all right, so I'm just going to be frank, okay? Uh, I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. and I talk to God a lot, and God answers me in weird ways sometimes, okay? And one day, I woke up, and he said, write the book. And I just laughed, and I said, okay. Mm -hmm. So I feel like God wrote the book, but I said, all right, Lord, but I have to title it <laughs> something. <laughs> and, you know, the word ass is in the Bible. It's a donkey, mm -hmm. right? And a uh, heart-shaped butt. See the heart-shaped butt I put on the cover, right? So <laughs> I, you know, I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. I'd rather be a smart ass than a dumb ass. Because 28 years ago, Marianne, I was a dumb ass. <laughs> but today I can honestly say I'm a smart ass. I love it. And I'm the okay? wise one. <laughs> there you go. There you go. This is great, though. I titled it that because I wanted the addict to look at this and say, holy crap, I am an ass. I I'm going to be revising it now, but I wanted to make it very short and to the point, and I wanted them to be able to do this and mm -hmm. put it in their back pocket. Do this is fold the book in half. Put it and just stick it in your back pocket. And the funny thing is, a friend's son came to do some work for me outside my home when my book first came out, and I signed it and I gave it to him, and I called my daughter crying. He took it, folded it, and put it in his back pocket. Ah. And I was like, Tiff, you know. This is what it's about. This is what it's about. And that's what you wanted to kind of convey yes. without saying it. Yes. I'm going to fold it and it's going to yes. be my tool. Yes. And I have something to always have in my that's back right. pocket. That's what, you're, that's, that's what that you wanted to convey. That's what I wanted to convey. So for people that want, I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass, where can they find this book? It's everywhere. It's barnesandnoble.com, Amazon. It's everywhere. Just put in the title. It'll come up. Trust me. And that title is? Yep. I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. You have that on your okay. hat. You have that on <laughs> your sweatshirt. I, I love it. Absolutely. But I want to I share something with you. The reason why I said God wrote this book is this is a cool story, too. Um, I, had a, I wrote this. I hand wrote it in three weeks. So I did one of my fasts, and I wrote this book. And I'm not great with computers or typing or anything. And here I am with papers. So I called my <laughs> brother up who was on dad duty while I was fasting. I didn't tell him I was writing a book. And I said, I have a little issue I wrote a book. And he goes, you wrote a book, okay? I said, yeah, but I wrote it, hand wrote it. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> so I called a friend of mine, and she came up with the computer program in, and she got it all through. And she said, Jer, my uncle used to, um, he, he's gone now, her uncle, but he published books. And, and she said, we're going to send your book to about 20 to 30 different publishers. Don't get upset, because it might take years. I said, oh, no, no, no. God wrote the book. <laughs> I said, we're only sending it to one, Simon & Schuster. She's like, okay. Sent it to Simon & Schuster. We put her as an attachment as well because of the computer issues I have. <laughs> Five days later, I get a, a three-way call with her and Simon & Schuster on the line. She said, Jerry, I hope you're sitting down. I said, I don't have to sit down. 
She said, Simon & Schuster loves your book. Archway Publishing was their newest division. They're going to publish it. I said, I know. I said, God wrote it. <laughs> that's how Aww. sure I was, guys. That's amazing. But that's the truth. And it's also your internal gut telling yep. you to do something. Follow your gut. Yep. That's Every, right. It does know everything. We, that's right. We are aware of that. Um, and the fact that you sat down and wrote it, is it like one of you, because I want to ask for people okay. that are going to read this book is it your personal journey of what you understood or like mm, what I did was I didn't want it to be about me but I needed to put a little bit in there guys so they knew I understood what they were going right. through so really what it is it's short and sweet and to the point of how you guys can get healed can I read one of the poems yeah okay absolutely. I'm going to read a poem to you because this is how you'll really understand who I am and what this book is about okay it's the, the last poem in the book, the, the chapters are very short, guys, okay? Um, it's called Change Your Choice. I had a life-changing moment that I knew had to be. The only way to change things was to first start with me. So I looked in the mirror and, and woke up one day and thought to myself I needed to pray. So I asked God to change me, to help me stay strong, to clean up my mess, to right what's been wrong. I cleaned up my diet. I cleaned up my room. I cleaned up all habits with this old, dirty broom. I kept going forward and never looked back. I refused to derail, stayed on the right track. I realized my worth and all that did matter through my selfish behavior, the lives I had shattered. I finally decided at 30 years old to stop abusing my body, my mind, heart, and soul. My life-changing choice that I had once made over 28 years now, guys, my debt has been paid. So you read all my thoughts on how to stay clean. It's all or nothing, my friend. There's no in-between. To live or to die is a choice you must make. Your life is not worthless and you're not a mistake. One day at a time is a slogan you've heard. It works if you work it while applying his word. For you to get healthy, for your mind not to fail, escaping reality will keep you in jail. With addictive behavior, sex, drugs, food, or money, substituting addictions, now isn't that funny? I'm not an addict, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Mm. Oh, that's wonderful. That's great. That's great. And you're very good at poetry. Oh, thank you. You write this. So for those of you who are listening, you just heard the last poem that's actually in the book. Yeah. That's fantastic. It's also great advice. It is great yeah. advice. Yeah. I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. You could find this online. Um, and to be able to have a starting place if you're interested in this. And like she said, the book folds up right that's in your right. back pocket, and that's it can right. be your personal manual. That's so right. I'm so glad you wrote that book and yeah. shared it with people and on a mission to help people. Yep. So I really thank you for that. And if you're just tuning in, you are listening to the Health and Wellness Show here on coaradio.com. And I'm going to go right to our sponsor. And I am proud to say they are a new sponsor of the show, as I said at the top of the hour. And that is IndieCast TV. Making money as an indie artist just got easier. Your fans will be able to find you anywhere as IndieCast TV soon can be seen on Kodi, Roku, and Apple TV, as well as IndieCastTV.com. If your music video makes the IndieCast TV Top 150, it will air on the Indio IndieCast TV 24-hour linear channel broadcasting worldwide. Each time your video airs, you will receive 25 cents per play from the very first play. If you're an indie artist, you can visit their website for more exciting details at www.indiecasttv.com. IndieCast TV, what music television should be. So I love that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your very own MTV. <laughs> Absolutely. And stay tuned for an important announcement that will be coming up, I promise, <laughs> on the hour. But I'm getting back to you, okay, sweetheart. Jerry. Now, you, we've gone through where, okay, where you're born and raised, that you have girl, grandchildren, and it's graduating. It's just like beyond me. As I look <laughs> at you, I can't believe it. Um, we went through how you became an addict and your personal experience, how you took that, plus your diagnosis with cancer, and you've recovered from that. That's amazing. And how you did it by yourself and the choices that you made to do that. Then you write this book, and God tells you to write a book. You write it, and it gets published, which yep. is amazing. And then now, you, with all of that, you don't stop. You become a radio talk show host. That was crazy. Now, <laughs> was this a dream of yours? No. Never. Actually, my daughter's really great in front of the mic. And if you, <laughs> if you would put a mic in front of me, I would shut up. But I talked every day of my life in school and got in trouble every day of my life. 
So I should have just done this, okay? <laughs> I was always in trouble for talking, but if you put a mic in front of me, I froze. So when the book came out, Doc G from Hamilton Radio said, come on, DJ Danny wants to interview you. And he's like, Jared, come on, we got to get you. And I, was, I said no at first. And then he kept it. I was like, I prayed about it. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And now look. Well, now, from my understanding, you're a host on five networks. You're on Hamilton Radio. Yep. You're on PANJ Radio. Yep. You're on Beverly Nation Talk Radio. That's right. Damon, Damon Looks. looks. Um, and Remember Then Radio. So are these syndicated and titled The Jerry Petito okay. Show or on these networks? Or are you hosting different shows on each of the networks? Okay. Like, tell us about it. So... Beverly Nation is syndicated, and my show is the Jerry Petito Show, okay? So my topics are whatever I choose them to be. And, mm -hmm. I, and I'm more of a variety show because every one of my shows, I have to say, is to empower. So even if I have, you know, guests that were abused as children, they've had to have already overcome it because that's important so that the viewers can know there's help for them. Right. So then I have artists as well, okay, upcoming. I love to promote new and upcoming artists, you know, local business. I love all that. Um, but PANJ Radio, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Beverly Nation is syndicated, and that's what's really bringing me to the level I'm at. Which has been extraordinary. I've been following you yeah. on social media and things like that. And if you'd like to share, you had a show today, and <laughs> so, tell us about it. Well, I had a show today. Larry Chance from the Earls was my guest. Oh. Okay, remember, remember then? Remember. And Remember Them Radio actually <laughs> named their studio after that song. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. It was so cool. That is cool. But, but the coolest things that are happening, um, I got an award out of Germany for merit and participation, and now I'm up for 2019 Internet International Hall of Fame. Right, and it is that's cool. Standing, you received Great. a certificate of yep. achievement yes. by the International Internet Radio yeah. Hall of Fame, and now you're a nominee now for I'm 2019. A nominee for 2019. How did this process work for you to receive a certificate <laughs> and nomination? Like, what did you, what? Usually, you have to jump through quite a few hoops. Hold for it. This. Listen, so. I, I am not kidding you. I didn't even know that this was happening. It happened under my feet. All I knew was I was breaking some really cool records on a syndicated station, which is Beverly Nation. And I get a phone call out of Stockholm, Sweden through Brother O. And he said, Jerry Petito, you have to break one more record. The criteria is three years in broadcasting, mm -hmm. and you have to break 10 records with a syndicated station to even be thought of mm. as a nominee. He said, Jerry, not many people, if any, make it right out of the shoe. Right. He said, but guess what? You make one more, they want you. Oh, that's awesome. So that week, you know, I broke another record. So now I, I broke my 14th with them last wow. night. That's and amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. No, thank that's you. great. Thank you. I mean, it's unbelievable. I had no idea. He called me up. I was like, what did you just say? And then the next thing I know, I get this award out of Germany. And I was just like, Lord, are you kidding me? Like, this is unreal. Right, right. So I didn't even know I was doing anything to do it. Right. So for the person who didn't want to be a radio show okay, host, okay. it's now everywhere. So God said it's going to happen. So you know what wheel. that means? Jesus you, took the wheel. You plan, God laughs. There you go. <laughs> all the time, though, all the time. I really believe that. All the time. I really do. And, um, but congratulations Thank to you because that's a huge yeah, honor. A and huge. if there's any way we could help you get to that achievement. No one can vote for it. They have to. They're like the higher-ups all over the world. They do the voting. So, um, but listen. Even just being nominated, Brother O thinks I have a really great shot at winning, but even being nominated, are you kidding me? That's Come great. on. That's so great. if the International Internet <laughs> Radio Hall of Fame is listening to the Health and Wellness Show here on COARadio.com, Jerry Petito is here. She is absolutely <laughs> promoting you guys okay. on the show for that. They stalk all my know. shows. So See? So there you are. And we are talking about the lovely, the <laughs> one and only Jerry Petito so cool. on this show. So, so cool. you know, um, I wish you a lot of luck Thanks, with that. Marianne. And, you know, if there's anything that any of us Thank can you. do to help support you, by Thank all means, you. just ask, which I'm really excited Thank you. to help. And 
What I do want to bring up here is for our next sponsor is our very own City of Angels. Um, City of Angels is here and we are here for help. We've been talking about addiction and recovery here with Jerry and City of Angels is conquering our addictions. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, help is available. Do not be embarrassed. Pick up the phone if it's yourself, if it's a relative, and you can call 24 hours a day, City of Angels at 609 910-4942. And if you want to become a donator, a sponsor of City of Angels, that's what we work off of. All the donations go back completely for the families and for the recovery and to get help. Nothing is sitting here pocketed like most organizations that you hear of. So if you would like to make a donation yourself, you could visit the website at www.cityofangelsnj.com. Org. Click the donation tab, enter any denomination you like. And if you enter in the special instructions, a donation for the health and wellness show, I will personally make you an official sponsor for 30 days of this show. Beautiful. So please visit cityofangelsnj.org or help. It's just a phone call away. If you are struggling or a loved one is, call City of Angels. They're doing amazing work and can lead you in the right direction. Call them today at 609 910 4942. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful organization. It really is. And also, we have some exciting news that um, Art shared me with today. Within about a month, we will offer an Apple app for coaradio.com. So anybody who has the Apple yeah. app, share some details, Art. Uh, we, we have a, an Android app right now, but we didn't have an Apple app uh, because the radio uh, broadcasting company that we deal with lost their I, – I mean, I think it was right when Apple changed everything. You have to go out and get your own developer's license and yeah. submit it yourself. It's like self-hosting. <laughs> <laughs> so we're finally doing that, and I finally had the app built, and um, we'll have it soon. It's exciting, man. <laughs> I'm saying a month. I'm hoping it's oh, that's soon. Oh, I'm psyched. Yeah, that's cool. It's great. It's like, that's and cool. you know It'll what? It'll make it a lot easier for people to listen. I yeah. know, and you know what they could hear when they listen to the health and wellness show? It's been raining for a week oh my like goodness. in new jersey the weather has been horrendous oh my goodness and how many people would love to see the sun would you like to see the sun i would like to see the sun rich oh, okay. <laughs> would, would you like to see the sun rich would you i guess so and art i forget you? what the sun looks like you forget what it looks like well we're gonna sit here and hope that it comes out and jerry are you gonna help us along yes, through to help the wellness sing along here with rich lander playing a little bit of the beatles here comes the sun Yeah, 
Uh, that thank you, awesome. Rich. Oh, you that was so great. awesome. Oh, you sound great. <laughs> so that means now the sun will come out, right? Thanks. Allegedly. Allegedly. Because it's a little depressing every it's crazy. day. Right? Friday. It's supposed to come out Friday. Friday? Friday is what's supposed I to happen. I hope so. My, my grandson graduates Friday. I hope it's out. I hope it's out, too. I it's really supposed to be a nice Friday. The humidity is supposed to go okay, away. Good. Saturday is supposed to be beautiful. Okay, good. So those graduations. and So the song worked. The song worked. It should be good. And you know what date I hope that the sun is out? Save the date. Saturday, September 14th, 2019. City of Angels 5K Walk and Run. It's time to get those running shoes out and register for this year's Walk Run and to start organizing your fundraising teams for this year's Walk Run with the Angels 2019. Let's work together to make this year's Walk Run with the Angels the biggest and most memorable yet. Thank you in advance for continuing to support our efforts in assisting families and individuals help in seeking the battle of addiction now. For those of you who want details, we got details. The location is Mercer County Park, the West Picnic area in West Windsor, New Jersey. And that's on Hughes Drive in Hamilton, New Jersey. There'll be post rates, refreshments, t-shirts for pre-registrants, testimonials from recovery, special guests, and more. The course now is relatively flat course through scenic park trails. It's paved. There's large on-site free parking. On-site registration is from 8 a.m. to 9.15. And walkers start at 9.30, runners start at 10. And online registration is available at www.cityofangelsnj.org backslash walkwiththeangels. And get this, they're actually going to award prizes for this as well. So there's top male and female overall and top three finishers in each A group from 14 and under, 15 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, and 70 plus. Oh my God. Incredible. I love it. It's officially timed as well. Your entry fee is $25 in advance, $30 on race day registration. And it's also open to all vendors. So if you're interested in becoming a vendor at no charge, yes, I said at no charge, you can register to become a vendor or any questions on the event, and you can email info at cityofangelsnj.org. And to keep up with the latest details for this event, because there'll be many, visit their website at www.cityofangelsnj.org nj.org and again september 14th get those running shoes ready or you can actually go to walkwiththeangels.com as well all right i love that you're here because you just keep me on target i love it absolutely love it well jerry you're here on a very very special night and i'm going to tell you why you're here on a very special i night. can't wait to hear okay so i have a very big announcement that is near and dear to my heart when people say that I have been incommunicado or Rich has been incommunicado or the people on my staff, um, Russ Markowitz and Jay Petsko, all of us, we have been in studio that I am so excited to announce working and introducing my new TV show coming out this August and it's going to be called Bear All with Marianne Costello. That's incredible. I'm so excited. That's incredible. And this show comes from New York City. This show is where we get to the heart of the matter with our special guests, our special show topics and healthy lifestyles. And this is a show you don't want to miss. We've had many guests from comedians to radio DJs to actors to top doctors to organizations on a mission, to producers, authors, rock bands, and so much more. And it's coming this August. It can be viewed on Comcast local access channels as well here. It'll have a video on demand on a barrel station and its own YouTube channel as well. I am so excited. I want everybody to help support it. The more support that we get, the more guests we can bring on. And you will be surprised by the lineup of guests. You stay tuned to social media. You stay tuned to City of Angels. We will bring you all the details. But again, it's going to be called Bear All with Marianne Costello, a new TV show coming out in this August of 2019. Very I'm cool. So very excited. cool. Very cool. So excited. Very cool. And it's so hard that when you're working on something, you can't say anything That's right. for the longest time. And we've been filming and filming, and we have season one practically complete, and we're already on season two. That's cool. And it's absolutely fantastic, and it's basically a variety show, and it tells you about everything 
from guests. We get to the heart of the matter with them. And they've been so near and endearing and just so gracious. And I can't thank everybody who's been involved from production, from inception of the show, from the ideas that we had, people mentoring me, helping me along the way, and making this actually happen. And keeping up on me, giving me constructive criticism that I've taken so well. Well, we all love you and we're all very proud of you. Well, I am so proud. And it's so near to my heart. And I could cry and I'm not going to do that on air right now because <laughs> they're happy tears but most of all here is that logo and it will be bear all with marianne costello That's awesome so I, I love it we love it and um i hope that you'll tune in and we'll give you all the fine details exactly what night of the week and everything as it unfolds but you heard it here first first time ever mentioning it here on coaradio.com so i'm so excited it's gonna be awesome. that's so incredible I and I got to be here to hear it, guys. That's what it's my first that, time. Oh my god. I could let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. It's been a long time. It has been. And everybody's like, where have you been? You don't call me. You don't write me. And I'm like, if you ever know the crazy schedule that I have had to do all this, and then it's hard to your friends and family and all who you have to keep it hush hush to. Oh, wow. And it's been very hard. So for any white lies I may have told <laughs> that, you know, I've been here when I really haven't been or whatever, just please understand. I didn't know how to handle all of it, but now I have it under control. That's so cool. Thank you so much. So, so cool. Really, so proud really of excited. You. Beautiful. Thank you. It's Thank a great you. show. It's a great show. It's a lot of fun. I'm so excited. Beautiful. I Beautiful. really am excited. And you know what? And the reason why I'm excited because... This next sponsor helped sponsor the show for me, That's beautiful. which is really good. And that is the Recovery Spot. Recovery Spot is innovating recovery with cutting edge addiction treatment and outpatient recovery for drugs and alcohol, offering state-of-the-art medical approaches combined with personalized treatment. They are physician owned and operated by Dr. Ramesh Sawney and Dr. Scott Bienenfeld. And they are now have two locations. You have Recovery Spot New York, and that is at www.recoveryspotny.com. And now they've opened in Malibu and San Diego, California. And you could find them on the web at www.recoveryspotca.com. And if you have any questions you want to see, their facility is absolutely state of the art. They do personalize every treatment with everybody who's come in. And if you want to call, you can call them at 866 677 6869. That is the recovery spot. They're innovating recovery. Thank you for all that you do for recovery. And thank you so much for believing in me as well. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Absolutely. I, I can't thank them enough because without everybody right. combined, it would have never happened. It's insane. Absolutely. But I'm going to get back to you, Jerry. It's incredible, but I'm proud of you. Thank you. No, that's incredible. I'm so excited. You know, I love you. And, you know, oh. for it to happen to you is incredible for me. Well, thank you so much. That's very nice. And it means a lot because I've always, you know, I've started out doing different things. And then City of Angels is also gave me the honor of having this show and I thank Danny Coleman as well because without Danny bringing me to City of Angels and starting this show and handing it over I thank him for being a mentor as well being on his show for Rock On Radio and you know being with him for almost two years it yeah. was a, a great ride great guest and he's a great host and you could catch his show here also on city of angels um on sunday nights he also has replays as well intakes outtakes all kinds of things and that's rock on radio um dot com actually he has his own website too yeah, I right i believe it's uh D-C-R-O-R.com. There the it is. The short version. At the short version. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he also celebrated his 10 years of yeah. Rock on Radio. So congratulations, Danny, for that. And uh, I couldn't do it without the team of people, like I said, or the mentors over the years. So I want to thank you, Art and Kevin and everybody from City of Angels, cool. believing in me, having Rich on here as well. Richie, thank you for believing in me from the start. I drive you crazy, I know. <laughs> um, and we butt heads, like, really behind the scenes, but we work to make each other better and work on both projects, and it's just been a dream. Everyone needs a Rich in the studio. Can I borrow him with that guitar That's sometimes? okay, because when he's in the studio, I'm after him. Okay. So it's, 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 it's a so really, great. it's a love-hate relationship. It's so great. <laughs> well, music, oh, it softens everything. That's right, right, it does. It really does. Absolutely, I just love it. You know, thank you. 
Yes, beautiful. It really does. And it's really nice music when you know he's placating you at the same time, too. So understand there's a, like another side to that. But you also provide music on the show. You're here with me every step of the way. I'm with you every step of the way of your career as well. And I just want to shout out to even the fans for yeah. continuously coming to the show, promoting it, um, and just being a part of my life. And I'm glad I could bring that to you, and especially on TV. It's like a dream come true. So beautiful. Yeah. I want to just say something, how we met through Ava. Let's give Ava a shout out. Yes, Ava Holly. That's and right. I'm going to bring her on the show. She's happy on her, her show. She was so, she was so nice. Uh, Ava, right? She's got a great She's sense of humor. That's too. how I met you guys. Yes, Beautiful. it was on Ava's show yeah. when was she interviewed us. Remember Ava Holly. The, the first time we went to Atlantic City to go to the show? Yes. And she went the extra mile to get the photos and all that kind of stuff. You could tell she's a beautiful Amazing. person. Amazing. She yeah. got food for us and all yeah, that. Food. She did. She treated us like royalty. Yeah. She I now felt has like a show on Hamilton Radio. I sponsor for her as well. Oh, yeah, great. She just started. Oh, so, yeah, wow. I love Ava. And that's, Ava's great. That's be, that's how we met, guys. And Ava oh, is yeah. also that's like true. a designer. She has handbags. Yep. She's at fashion shows. She's yep. into a little bit of Ava's everything. Ava's eye bags. Absolutely. And she's been on other shows, and I will bring her on in here as well. She's but beautiful. she's been absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. And I have to say, she treated us like such royalty that yes. when we walked out of Atlantic yes. City on the boulevard, I was starting to do the royal wave to everybody. It was crazy, Because right? I really thought I was like okay, royalty. But you are. <laughs> then Richie brought me down <laughs> in the car. He's like, okay, enough. <laughs> <laughs> but she, but you are. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but I'm going to get back to you. Okay. Because we mentioned this about friendlies. But you're currently helping with fundraising events. I see you on social media. Yes. For CARE. That's C-A-R-E. Yes. The program at the Friendlies Restaurant yes. in Robbinsville, New Jersey. Yes. Now, can you share some insight on these events, how people can get involved, and yes. what it is? Because it's substantial, and you really got this off the ground. Well, this is... Well, first of all, uh, let me tell you about CARE real quick first. So, CARE is... Community Addiction Recovery Effort. I always like have to say that slowly to get it right. right. Okay. okay. Jody Gold Stevens, who's the secretary of the mayor of Robbinsville, she's the president of CARE, which I love saying we have a woman president, and she's the woman I would have voted for. Hmm. Okay. Um, Officer Scott Kivett, he's the vice president of CARE. Okay. Okay. Jody lost her brother to opioids, and I think today or yesterday was the anniversary of his death, which is, right? Yeah, it's pretty close. Heart, heartbreaking. So anyway, the reason why this is so near and dear to me is I've been in this township, in Robbinsville Township, for over 45 years, and I've never been so proud of Robbinsville Township ever. They started the care program. I went on a ride along with Officer Kivett with his dog, Corey. Really? And I saw, I witnessed it with my own eyes. It was like 8 o'clock at night. It wasn't even like midnight with no cars on the road. At, on the other side of the highway, says, we're going after that car. I said, why? Oh, it kind of went a little like this. I said, I do this all day long, you know? Right. Sure enough, heroin in the car, wow. the whole bit. But you have no idea the, what went on that night. And offered her help, she took it. So that's what CARE is about. Guys, I want to say something that's really vital here. If anyone, anyone, anyone wants to get help, you can walk into Robbinsville Township Police at any time. No questions asked, you will not be arrested. Hand mm. over your drugs and tell them you want help. They will get you help that night. That's mm. fascinating. Say that one more time. Okay. Wow. Walk into, Hamil uh, walk into Robbinsville Township Police. Hand over your drugs. Say, I need help. You will not be arrested. No questions asked. They will give you help. Wow. How amazing is that? That is amazing. Okay. And that's where people can go in yep. and not be ashamed. And we have so many outlets where we can get you free care for, for more than a month. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of different places that are on board with all this. Um, so, you know, um, so we do a lot of fundraisers at Friendly's and uh, huge fundraisers. I mean, Michael Diamor, the new lead singer of the Capris. Right. Okay, come on. There's a moon <laughs> out tonight, oh, okay? Yeah, he came. He's coming back in August for me. Ken Brady from the casinos, okay? Then you can tell me goodbye. He's a mm -hmm. per I was just at a 75th birthday party in Florida. He's already come out for me for different things to meet me actually a couple years ago. He's coming back in July to oh, do a fundraiser amazing. there. I mean, everybody's on board because here's the sad part. There's not a person out there that has not been affected by addiction in some way, whether yourself or someone you know or love, right? <coughs> I don't think there's anyone out there Absolutely. that can say... Oh, no. No, but you know what? They could come out, support a good cause, 
have a fribble while you're there. Have a fribble, <laughs> baby. Have, a, have fribble. a fribble while you're there and listen to wonderful entertainment. But you also mm -hmm. have had authors there. I've seen you have okay. all kinds of people. So the author, let me tell you about her. So do you, I, I've, I've done some different uh, authors, but the one I want to really share with you, we did a fundraiser for Judy Ortada. She wrote a book, and it was she titled it, um, I Don't Care What Other, I Don't Care What Most Angels Do. Okay? Oh, okay. The reason why it was titled that, it's all pictures from little kids that most of them have passed on that she went into different hospitals over the last 17, 27 years, actually. What am I saying? And had children who were dying of cancer draw their own angel, how they saw their angel. Some of the kids were in wheelchairs, so their angel was in a wheelchair. Oh. Okay? So I was approached at a fundraiser by a friend of hers, Dolly, and she said, Jerry, Judy wrote this book. No, one, no one's willing to help her publish it. I said, we're doing a fundraiser. We did a fundraiser 30 days later. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. That day, before we even walked in the door, we were only $200 shy of what we needed to get a book wow. published. Ava Holly Aww. published the book. Good for wow. Ava. Okay. There she goes again. Listen, the, the book is out. Now, they even have, um, they have it where, I don't want to, I want to say this correct. They have it where these books are going to be able to be bought at cost and distributed to all the hospitals and schools for children. That's fantastic. Okay? So this is, this is important. I want to share something with you, and this is sad, but this is how much of an impact this book can make on children. Um, they brought them to a few schools so they could test the waters with them, and they had the book on the desk of, um, what do you call it, a guidance counselor. A little boy was in there, probably like, 10 years old whose mom just passed away so the guidance counselor was helping him to understand it how do you do that right he saw the book and he picked it up and he started looking through it and he started crying he said now now I'm okay now I know that my mom's an angel hmm. for these children Beautiful. and and that book helped him and at that wow. moment that guidance counselor called the wow. principal and said we got to get these books in here that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is amazing. And it's good to start at the school levels That's because right. it's about educating. Absolutely. You know, while they're in school, you know. And it so has to start at the school level, not at high school. Right. Exactly. That's right. It's too late at high That's school. That's right. I think my cable's going. That's right. So that was a beautiful fundraiser. That and is. then we had four uh, homes attached in Robbinsville and Andover that got burnt down and we did a fundraiser there for them as well. Now if somebody's interested in coming out to the fundraiser or being a part of because you might need other sponsors Absolutely. Mentors, things, and being how does somebody find out about right. these events? So I put them everywhere all over social media. Um, I do the best I can do. We put flyers out. Um, we're having two more fundraisers so I'll let you know about them right now. The one fundraiser is going to be July 21st. Ken Brady from the casinos, guys, come out and meet him, okay? We're going to have that fundraiser. Um, we're not sure exactly. I, I don't want to really talk about it yet because we're not sure. We're up in the air with a couple different things for that fundraiser. Um, but that's going to be a great time. So July 21st, probably start around 3 o'clock. I think it's on a Sunday. Um, but in August as well, I think it's August 11th, it's a Sunday, whatever that is, Saturday or Sunday, but I'll have all the details on online. We're going to be doing part two for care. Okay. Because we did the part one for care and we mm -hmm. were able to put someone, one person, we made enough money to put one person through complete recovery, mm -hmm. which was beautiful. So now this is going to be part two, but this one's going to be huge. And this is where Michael Diamore from the um, Capri's is going <laughs> to be. It's going to be outside. We're hoping to have bouncy houses. and oh, I mean, It's going to be a huge thing all through the parking lot. Um, and we've got magicians coming out. We've got John Monforto, who is the <laughs> Philadelphia Rocky. Okay, he won mm. the award. He will be out. He's wow. incredible. We'll have Frankie Sweets on keyboard. Uh, a lot. We're going to have a magician there. Okay, Cliff. I mean, it's, it's going to be unbelievable. But the, the main thing is that these fundraisers are for great causes, guys. So come out and support us. But Jerry Petito, find me. Even Marianne, because I'll get her all the information. Yeah, please. And it'll be all over social mm. media. That's which great. would be great. So I have to ask this, because on a very fun note, you and I, have a guilty pleasure. Do you know what that is? She looked at her. She got quiet. Because I found out that you have a love for poker. Oh, yes. Look at her light up. I knew it was coming. I'm like, oh, boy, what is she going to say? 
I actually owned a poker league for 10 years in Mercer County called Ms. Night Owl Poker. I gave it up a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm still involved in poker. I could never not be. I'm a poker dealer as well. And yes, absolutely. You too. So what do you find fascinating about it's poker? It's ridiculous. It's, in st it's stupid, okay? It's just stupid. So, you know, Italian, right? So this is how we grew up. I wouldn't know anything about being Italian. Okay. So we grew up in a very dysfunctional household where every everything was so close and you know there were no boundaries ever right there's no boundaries in an italian home and you have to eat constantly so anyway <laughs> every sunday the families would get together and the women would be in one room playing poker or their card games whatever and the men would be in the other room so we were allowed to sit there quietly but we couldn't talk so they really taught us at a very early age how to play poker but we were never allowed to do it they used to tell us, don't gamble, and no, but they taught us. Right. So um, this, is, this is something that I said to my brother that's funny. I said to my brother, because a lot of my family members golf as well, and I said to my brother, how could you <laughs> stand on a golf course for all these hours doing this? <laughs> it is the worst, most boring sport. He said, how could you <laughs> for days sit at a poker table and do this? Fold, oh. <laughs> fold, bet. I said, okay, you're right, shut up. <laughs> so is it fun? I don't even know how to answer that. Why is it fun? I like to read people. Because okay. sometimes I have the lousiest hand and I know I do. But you could win. Yeah, and I have. Okay, so, and so I'm just like, you know, I sit there and once you got somebody's ticket, you just got it. And I find that, to me, that's what I find. Not, okay, it's nice to have the winning hand, let's be real. But when you don't have it, and you're sitting there and you're wondering if somebody else, what they call holding the nuts, the actual best hand of this whole thing. And you're sitting there going, no, I'm going to keep watching him the okay. way he blinks, the way he moves his face. And I love okay. the sunglass trick. Well, then listen, like I, guess that's, I guess that's why I love it too then. Because I love to trick people. Mm -hmm. My best <laughs> hand I ever, ever won. I won a tournament. It was, it was at the Hibernians actually. It was probably about four years ago, whatever it was. But there were newcomers. There were these young guys, and you know how they like to play, right? So they'll bet on nothing and try to get you off the hand and whatever, ridiculous. But anyway, long story short, we're at the final table. It's me and four of them, and two of their friends were out, but they were standing there watching us play. So it's me and these four young new guys, and I have, honest to God, it could have been two, four, four, six, off, whatever. I had crap, but I was the big blind. So I'm in, no one raised pre-flop, and there you go. So the flop comes. <laughs> the flop comes. I'll never forget this as long as I live. King, king, five, whatever. Rainbow. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, no, I'm sorry. It wasn't rainbow. That was the thing. King, king, five, and it might have been two hearts. That's what, what it was. They checked. Mm-hmm. So it came to me, and I said, nobody has a king. Because they have to be good players right. if they're at the table, but they're young and stupid to not realize that if they don't bet, I'm going to know they don't have a king. Because if there's two hearts on the board, right. you don't want anyone to get the flush. Right. So they didn't bet. So I check. The next card comes, whatever. It's not a heart. He bets. He calls. He calls. I go all in. Mm hmm Okay? They all fold. I show my crap. Their friends were like, oh, my God, <laughs> you tricked them. How did you know they didn't have a king? I said, if either one of them had a king, they are the worst poker players I've ever exactly. seen. Exactly. check on, you know? Exactly. And, you know, that happened to me because I was at an Italian-American ah. hall, okay? Well, so that let's was just no. Yeah. And it was an all-male tournament. It was an all-male club. And I begged because I knew somebody there. And I said, I just want to play poker. So I, they go, do you know how to play? I said, somewhat. Because I really didn't know. And I actually was in Myrtle Beach. And I bought this book that said, The Badass Girl's Guide to Poker. That's great. And I read it. I read it from cover to cover. And I tried to memorize it. And they're like, oh, OK, we'll just let you in. But you can't tell anybody that you're here because we'll never hear it from the wives, the whole thing, right? So I do the buy-in, the whole thing. And I'm sitting there, and I'm at the final table. And all this was was reading people because I really didn't know what I was doing. And it got down to where I was in the final two. It was me and this younger gentleman, right? And we're playing, and I get dealt a pair of twos. And I'm like, oh. I love it. I said, this is a pair of twos on the last thing, and this is it. You flop a so, two. Well, he turned around, and the flop comes down. But the problem was 
when they did that, nothing came down. And he's sitting there and he's looking at me and he starts betting. And then I just turn around and I don't even know. It could have been face cards there. Okay. And I really think it was like two aces, believe All it or right. not, and a king. It was something crazy. And he's looking at me. And he's just like, he goes, you know what? I'm going to go all in. And I'm looking at my stash. And I was like, you know what? I'm going. This is it. So we stand up. And they sit there. And they put the next card down. And it turns out, I think it was like a five or a six, right? So all of a sudden, he goes, you have to turn your cards over. Because I still didn't turn them over. And I throw them down. And it was a pair of twos. And he goes, you just went all in on a pair of twos, right? And he had a pair of eights, right? So I sat there. And it came right down to that last card. They just sat there. They put down that. I think it's the river card, right? He turns around. And a two came out, right? And they were like, oh, my God. She got this hand. They're calling me all kinds of names. He was mad. He was yeah, really yeah, mad. Yeah. Every word that came out of his mouth was, was not, not good. good. <laughs> but I had fun taking that money in the pot and putting Putting it in. Needless to tell you, I was never allowed back in that club again. <laughs> I they told me I was cheating because I had that book in my purse where it stood out, but I didn't even look at it, not once. And I can't tell you that I really thought I was gonna lose because when he had the pair of eights, I was like, oh God, here goes. And I never would have expected it to come out. So somebody was over me saying, you know, you shouldn't be gambling, but you know what, we're gonna let you win because you're the only girl here. At least that's what I thought. That's so funny. So then that's when I became fascinated with poker and then, you know, just loved it. So when I found out that you had this uh -huh. fascination. I, I, I had to bring it so up. So I'm going to tell you what the best hand in poker is, guys. Go ahead. Okay. And then I'll tell you what's funny about it. Jack four. Jack four is the best hand in poker. So it's on all my uniforms, uh, my Ms. Night Owl uniforms, mm -hmm. Jack four. I've played it. People, I have people all over the world. I go to Australia to play poker there with them, and they all play Jack four, okay, for the American. Mm hmm I have, I won a tournament at Parks. I, I have the ticket framed of this tournament with me wearing my Jack 4. So I'm not wearing it because I won the tournament. I was wearing it when I won the tournament. <laughs> All right. Someone looked something up for me. PANJ did a, a podcast for me about poker a year ago. And he looked something up for me and he said, and I didn't even know this. He said, do you know that Jack 4 is out there as, as this crazy thing? So there's like this... Uh, I forget what it's called, but it's almost like where there's a jack, there will be a four. Right. So they even have this out on the internet about this stupid hand. Huh. Okay? So nine times out of story. ten, <laughs> nine times out of ten, if you see a jack, you'll see a four. Not so much if you see a four, you'll see a jack. It's weird. It's like, oh, the, I forget what they said, something effect. Like, okay, with this jack and a four. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm telling you, now you're going to start to see it. Yep. So now I know every Jack doesn't have a Jill. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. There you go. It doesn't have a Jill. But now that, now that you know, yep. you're going you're gonna to be like, holy crap, Jer. Holy crap, Jer. Holy crap, Jer. Okay? And text me when you see it. I am. I'm, now I'm going okay? to. I am. And that's going to bring us to our next sponsor. And that is Neo Zoe Health and Wellness Center in Cranford, New Jersey. It's a very unique holistic wellness company recognizing the internet interconnection of body, mind, spirit, and the importance of creating complete wellness in a nurturing and comforting environment. Neo Zoe, creating new life through balanced living using nutrition, massage, and so much more. You can visit them on the web at www.neozoe, that's N-E-O-S-Z-O-E.com, or calling them today at 732-713-0123. And last but not least, we also have Rich Shalanda and Flying Dreams. It is the progressive rock band featuring world-renowned musicians Rich Shalanda from Flying Dreams, Fire Ballet, and now currently of Nectar as well. We have Ron Beanstalk. He is one of the highly rated intellectual <laughs> property attorneys as well as a great bass player and was part of the Suits as well. And you have world-renowned class act Kendall Scott on the keys as well who is with Project Objects Flying Dreams and also now part of Nectar and from Frank Zappa we have our drummer Jay Didimo so if you want to find out more about Rich Shalanda Flying Dreams and their schedule you can do so at www.richshalanda which is R-Y-C-H-E-C-H-L-A-N-D-A Flying Dreams Dot com. So thank you so much also for being a sponsor of the Health and Wellness Show. You're welcome. Thank you. I love it. So, Jerry, you have so much going on. 
I know that people might want to get in touch with you with everything. So I know you have different Facebook pages. You have Pinterest. You have Twitter. You probably have email. Everything. Can you give us all your info? I'm going to actually just give you one thing, okay? Wow. Because <laughs> I, I'm, listen, listen, I don't mind saying my age, okay? I'm close to 60. I'm not that person. My daughter and grandson had to make all my Twitter. I don't even use, use it. All right? Facebook, please. Get in touch with me on Facebook, all right? G-E-R-I-P-E-T-I-T-O. Message me. I'll give you my info then. Uh, I'll give you whatever you need. I'm here to help you guys. Okay? So Facebook. That's awesome. And just say that one more time, your okay. Facebook page. G-E-R-I, Jerry, Petito, P-E-T-I-T-O. Italian name by chance. You mm. think? <laughs> I'm just kidding. And I also want to uh, give a shout out here for the City of Angels Training Institute known as Cody. Um, they are going to have on July 7th through July 13th their Recovery Coach Academy, which is starting. All the classes are held at the First Baptist Church of Heightstown. And it is a seven day intensive training academy focusing on providing individuals with the skills needed to guide, mentor, and support anyone who would like to enter into or sustain long term recovery from addiction to alcohol or other drugs. You can get 30 CEUs from attending this class. The course price is $850, but there is a special discount price for City of Angels, and that is $400. It's a savings of $450. You can go and use a promo code RCA450 at the checkout. And in an effort to make Recovery Coach Academy more affordable to everyone, Cody does offer an installment plan as well. So you'll want to visit them at Cody, C-O-A-T, com, and also they're also offering recovery coach academy training module that you can if you wish to volunteer you can cr earn credits for your volunteer hours that can apply to this academy as well so again the dates are july 7th through july 13th and you can find it at www.codynj that's c-o-a-t-i-n-j dot com that so class is filling fast. It's filling fast. So That's again, a great class. That, remember, uh, we took that class. Absolutely. I'm teaching that class. You are? Oh, God, it's going to be a tough class. Watch That's out. You class. can't pass <laughs> notes. You can't do anything when he's in there. I'm For just real? Kidding. Get out. He makes, he makes you want to know <laughs> no. everything. Okay. I'm just busting chops. But, Jerry, I want to thank you so much for being a guest here thank on Health and Wellness. You. And anybody who's interested, I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. I just love to say I'd that title. I'd rather be a smart ass than a dumb ass. And don't be wise like me. Okay. <laughs> so you can go out and find that as well on. <coughs> Excuse me. BarnesandNoble.com, Amazon. Um, <coughs> That's Excuse okay. me, guys. I just sneeze myself. <laughs> Archway Publishing. Put, the, put in the title. It comes up. So I thank you so much. And stay, you know, in tune with Jerry. Follow her on Facebook, everything. If we get information, we'll be happy to pass okay. that along to our listeners. And I do want to thank all of our new sponsors that have joined Health and Wellness and made it possible. Thank you so much for letting me do my shout-out of my special announcement. And our next show... Rich and I will be in a studio with Nectar, so we are going to do a health and wellness replay on Wednesday, July 17th from 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., and the special guests on there will be Vinny Mad Dog Lopez and Tony Luke Jr. That was a fascinating show. I was just with Vinny Saturday night. Congratulations. He's good. He's all over the That's place. Right. I spent the whole day with him. They came to the baseball game. and uh, With the wonderful winos and all. And, and then they were at a... Uh, Pete's Steakhouse. Absolutely. So stay tuned for that replay. That's on Wednesday, July 17th. And we will be back here in City of Angels Studios on Wednesday, August 21st with our special guest, the Jersey Shore Angel, Maureen Lynch. She is fantastic. She's an author as well, too. And she has all kinds of talents. Cannot wait to meet her. And then mark your calendars. Yes, I'm going to say this out loud right now. Wednesday, September 18th, the legendary rock band Nectar will be here with us us, everyone from the band that you could call in and talk to, find out about their health and wellness, find out about their upcoming shows, and most of all, just be part of the Nectar experience that we've been trying to create for you. 
Derek Mo Moore, the bassist. Then you have the drummer, Ronnie Howden. You will also have Mick Brockett from the fabulous light show of Nectar. And you'll have Rich Shalanza. You will have Randy Dembo and Kendall Scott all here live in our studio September 18th. So mark your calendars. Guaranteed to be a great show. Until next time, thank you so much. I'm your host, Marian Costello, here on the Health and Wellness Show. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Do, 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 do. Here comes the sun. I say, it's all right.